Uh huh.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. We just got to get you. Okay, we're going to try it again. Come on and give the Lord the highest praise. Come on and give the Lord the highest praise. Come on and give the Lord the highest praise. Hallelujah. Let's magnify his name. Come on and give the Lord the highest praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and give the Lord the highest praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and give the Lord the highest praise. Hallelujah. Oh, come on and give the Lord His name. Come and give the Lord the highest praise. Hallelujah. Come on and give the Lord the highest praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and give the Lord the highest praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, bless his holy name. One more time, come on and give the Lord the highest praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on and give the Lord the highest praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on. Lord, the highest praise, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on and magnify his name, hallelujah. Amen. The Lord is worthy of the highest praise. And what's the highest praise? Hallelujah. What is the highest praise? Hallelujah. 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 The Lord is indeed worthy of the highest praise. And as we stated earlier, we didn't come for no other reason but to give God the glory. To give God the praise. Only because he is worthy of every last ounce of our worship of our glory hallelujah when you just think about who jesus is and what he did on calvary glory to god glory to god it was no easy thing that he did it was no easy thing saints of god i tell you if somebody poke you with a little stick pin i know we call it oh i don't want to get stuck nobody like needles in here i don't imagine but just imagine what jesus did what he suffered on calvary so that you and I might have a right to the tree of life. So that we, you and I might be born again. He didn't have to do it. But he became that great sacrifice. And we're so grateful. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
I don't know about you, but when you start saying thank you down from your belly, just Lord, thank you. You just begin to thank God for what He did. When you just say thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, it just just raise up in your belly, and you want to just give God the glory. You want to give God the glory. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. See, you know, when I go to the grocery store, I can't really cut up in the grocery store. They think I'm crazy. When I go to the bank, I can't cut up at the bank. They'll probably usher me out. Might even arrest me. But when I come to the household of faith, when I come to my father's house, when I step into these holy ground, that is where I know I can give God all the glory and all the praise. And I'm on the praise because y'all giving God the glory too, right? You're thanking God for Jesus, right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm just glad about it. I'm just glad to be saved, hallelujah, sanctified, filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Some say with the Holy Spirit, either one works for me. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, we're going to move it on. We come to just give out some glory. We're going to hear some good word tonight. We've got some lovely speakers lined up that are filled with the Spirit of God as well. And I know they're prepared to come forth. So what we're going to do, we're going to call for our first three speakers. Uh, that will be... Praise God. I guess I should put on my glasses. Amen. Pastor Benjamin, followed by our district missionary, Mother Jackson, then by Minister Teresa James in that order. Praise God. Let's receive them as they come. Let the church say amen. amen. Come on, somebody say amen like you mean it. This is the celebration of something that happened so very long ago, but still has an effect on our lives. Can I get a witness? Amen. amen. So gracious to be in the house of God yet another time. We honor him for his greatness, his mercy, and his grace. We also want to show reverence to Bishop Dixon in his absence and his staff here at Greater Woodland Park. And seated to my right, Lieutenant Reverend Dr. Glenn. Amen. And to all the clergy who will brace the pulpit tonight and uh, sitting in the audience. And to you, my brothers and sisters. And one special person is here with me tonight, my wife. God bless you. The scripture that I'm speaking from is taken from the 23rd chapter of Luke uh -huh. and the 34th verse, okay. King James Version. Uh -huh. Allow me to read from the 32nd, though, to the 34th, as these other verses bears great significance on the selected scripture. And there were also two other male factors led with him to be put to death. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, where they crucified him, 
the male factors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this one more opportunity that you have allowed me to stand behind your holy desk. I pray now, God, that you would use me to the utmost. Allow your spirit to dwell within me. Take me down depth in the deep parts of your word and allow me to come up praising God just like Jesus got up on the third day. Bless now and keep us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let me use for a subject in this short time, realizing the power of God. Realizing the power of God. Let us examine, if you will, the time, the place or location and what has happened thus far uh -huh. to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Looking back, his own disciple Peter has already denied him three times. Uh -huh. Can I get a witness? Before the roaster crowed. The Sanhedrin people has tried him, uh -huh. asking him, I thou the Christ. Can I get a witness? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And he said unto them, if I tell you, you will not believe. Uh -huh. He is then led to uh, Pilate's chambers for trial because the people are not satisfied. Uh -huh. Now, these are the same people that laid down palms and when he came riding on the donkey, uh -huh. remember that? Come on, somebody. Uh -huh. Hmm? Yeah. And so Pilate tries him, and Pilate says, Pilate's asking, Art thou the king of the Jews? Mm -hmm. And he answered, Jesus that is, and said, Thou sayest it. Mm -hmm. Then said Pilate to the chief priests and the people, I find no fault in this man. Right. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. <laughs> but the people are still not satisfied. So, mind you, this is the same man who turned water into wine, and good wine at that. This is the same man that raised Lazarus from the dead. Hello, somebody. This is the same man that healed the woman's, the, the man's daughter. He didn't even go to the house. Huh? And now the chief priests and the people want him crucified. Can I get a witness? He was then led to Herod. And when Herod saw Jesus, he was exceeding glad. For he was desirous to see him for a long season. But Herod didn't really want to see Jesus because Herod wanted to kill Jesus. Can I get a witness? So let me remind you that if that was one of us that we had gotten in this situation, we would have said something derogatory or done something out of the ordinary. Yes, Can I get a witness? Yes, amen. That's what sin leads us to do. Uh -huh. My brothers and my sisters, Come on, sir. Come on. a man so powerful and able to accomplish that which he was set to do for your sins and mine. Uh -huh. Can I get a witness? Amen. I'm not here to question your faith or your belief or what you think about Jesus. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Can I hear witness? And so for him to say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. This man has to be powerful. Can I hear witness? And so, in closing, before I take my seat, 
Let me remind you that Jesus was the right person for the job at hand. And remember, sinners cannot forgive sinners. You can show me the way, but you can't get me there or get me to heaven. Remember, it is the son that we must go through to get there. Can I get a witness? Pilate said, I find no fault in him. He was led to crucifixion because that was his father's ultimate goal. And moreover, the people, his own people, cried out, crucify him. And that is what they did. <laughs> Through it all, he was nailed to the cross. Two thieves, one on the right and one on the left. <laughs> suffering, bleeding, he still spoke to his father and being able to see the future, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Can I get a witness? Before I take my seat, I want to tell you how glad I am. I'm glad that he took the trial. I'm glad that he hung on the cross. I'm glad he didn't try to come down. I'm glad that he's still the rose of Sharon. I'm glad that he's still the lily of the valley. I'm glad that he's still the bright and water star. I'm glad that he showed me how to lift my eyes to the hills from where he's coming by help. I'm glad. I'm glad. He told him, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. All right. All right. All right. Woo! Are you all right? Thinking about it, I'm gonna die, and I'm gonna be in the grave. That shit. 
Praise the Lord, everyone. God is good. God is good. I, I do give honor to uh, God and I do give honor to my bishop, uh, Dixon, in his absence. And I do give honor to um, my superintendent, my pastor, Dr. Charles Glenn, and to all the God's children, all my father's children. Thank God for being here. My third, my saying is the third saying of Christ. And it's the scripture coming from 19... Uh, Ooh, Let me slow down. John 19, John 19, 25 to 27. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus. God, let me decrease and you increase, Father. In the name of Jesus. Let your anointing fall fresh on me. In the name of Jesus. Let, not, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Amen. I'm so excited. God is good. I'm excited about the word that's gone forth before me. Amen. Amen. And I'll be reading from John, John 19, uh, verses 25 to 27. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, uh -huh. he said to his mother, woman, behold your son. And then he said to the disciple, behold your mother. And from that hour, that wow. disciple took her to his own home. Yes. Hallelujah. And my title this afternoon, this evening is the compassion of Christ the compassion of Christ. Uh, and if I had a subtitle, I would be, I would say, uh, look up and live. Look up. Can you say it with me? Look up, look up and, live. and live. Amen. So I know that many of you today may have experienced the compassion of Christ through uh, our great losses of our loved ones during the pandemic 2020 and the bitterness of disease, death, and distance in this pandemic. And I believe that this third saying of Christ has a special meaning for all of us who believe. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, in this third saying of Christ, we find Jesus instructing his mother, Mary and John, the disciple whom he loved, because their relationship was about to change forever. In the midst of Jesus' intense pain and suffering, he still had the presence of mind to honor his earthly mother by providing for her needs on three levels. First, Jesus provided for her emotional need by giving her permission to leave before he was engulfed in darkness. He also provided someone who could and would be there to comfort her during her time of grief. This time of extreme grief was prophes prophesied by Simeon in Luke 2, 34 to 35. Now that sword which Simeon spoke of had indeed pierced her heart as she beheld her son being crucified on the cross. So let's look at Mary. Mary was standing at the cross along with the other three. The, the disciple that Jesus loved and the other two. Uh -huh. Mary stands, uh, the grace of God sustained Mary in the time of her grief. She was not fainting or throwing a fit or uh, she, was, uh, uh, she was standing by the grace of God. God sustained her and so it is with us. Uh, many of us may have experienced uh, losses and great hardships. But through it all, God's grace sustained us. It sustained Mary and it will also sustain us. We can all stand, we can all stand in faith, just as Mary did. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. John was the only apostle with enough courage to take his stand with the women at the cross. Jesus saw that John's own mother was there at the cross, supporting and comforting 
her son and, and her sister Mary. This shows that John had a good upbringing and had a mother who was a believer. John saw that uh, Jesus saw John standing nearby and saw that John was probably experiencing as much pain and heartache as Mary was. So uh, Mary and John could comfort each other during this very difficult time. Mary and John willingly complied with Jesus' instructions because uh, in John 19, 27, we are told that from that same hour, John took Mary to his own house. Let me back up. Let me back up. Be before that, he said, behold, he said, behold your mother. And behold means to look. It means to look. Look at your mother. Look at your son. Jesus was then establishing relationships. He was establishing someone to be there for Mary in her time of grief. Someone to care for her as his own mother. And that is exactly what John did for her. Amen. Jesus provided the emotional and spiritual and physical needs of his of of uh of his own mother during her, his moments of physical pain and weakness and humiliation. And I want to say something. I'm going to pause right there, put a pin in it, and say that um during our times of uh hardships and great losses, we too must uh shift our eyes to somebody else that is hurting. We too must uh, share God's love and comfort to other people and not just focus on my four and no more. So God has uh, allowed us to show compassion for others, be concerned for what they're going through. Not only what you just lost your, you know, I know you had a great loss, amen. Uh, all souls are valuable to God, but still God want us to show that real concern for other people, show that real love for other people. So, cause, so we are our brothers and sisters keeper. Amen. Amen. So I want to say that um, also uh, in, in Mark 10, 45, the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Even while dying on the cross, Jesus was concerned about his family. Are we concerned about our church family, our brothers and sisters in Christ? Or is it, is it just, you know, like I said, me and my four no more. Jesus entrusted his mother to John. Why? Maybe because John stayed with Jesus at the cross. How many of us will stay with someone that's going through a hard time? How many of us would just be there for that sister or for that brother who's going through, you know, in their lowest moments? So Jesus said, we got to show this compassion to our sisters and brothers in Christ. Amen. Amen. So God wants us uh, believers to show real concern for others, for one another. He want us as believers to show that compassion that he had for when he died on the cross for my sins and for your sins. He did it just for you and me. And this is a song said, I don't know why Jesus loves me, but I'm so glad he did. He left his mighty throne in glory to bring to us redemption stories. And then he died and he rose again just for you and me. Oh, but I'm glad. I'm so glad he did. And uh, before I get ahead of myself, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The, this word, this, word uh, this third saying of Christ uh, encourages to Mary encourages our faith. Jesus still provides for us even today. Hallelujah. Even he, today, he cares for us. Hallelujah. Uh, and uh, also the scripture says in Galatians 2 and 20, I have been crucified with Christ. Yeah. Nevertheless, not I, but Christ that lives in me. Uh -huh. And the life which I now live in this flesh, I live by the faith of the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So we got to be willing, saints, to die to ourselves, so that the Christ life can shine through us. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Not my will, God, but your will be done. So I, in my closing, 
I want to say that Jesus is yet providing for our needs. He provided us hope in this famine. He's provided us in the perilous time protection and he provided us comfort and he provided for us a church family. And God wants us to show real compassion for souls for the kingdom. Amen. Jesus gave us his best when he gave us himself to God be the glory. Remember the compassion of Christ. Look up and live. Amen. Beautiful. Praise God. Let's give God the praise for these great speakers. Amen. Praise God. We can do better than that, saints of God. Hallelujah. Thank God. Beautiful. We thank God for that powerful word from our three speakers. Oh, we're going to have a little bit of singing right about now. I'm going to ask uh, evangelist Benjamin if she'll come and lead us in the congregational song. Praise God. And after she finished, after we finish singing, we're going to have our next three presenters, Elder Kara Stockdale, uh, Pastor Eric Miller, followed by Elder Mars, then Elder Woods. Amen. Amen. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make us whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Sing it, oh, precious is the flow that makes us white as snow no other ground i know nothing but the blood of jesus what can watch away our sins say nothing but the blood of jesus what can make us whole again say nothing but the blood of jesus sing it oh precious is the flow that makes us one as snow no, no other but i know nothing but the blood of jesus where well, there is power power wonder working powers in the blood of the lamb there is power power wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb, say it again, there is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the lamb in the precious in the precious blood of the lamb in the precious blood the precious blood of the lamb hallelujah thank you for the power lord thank you for the blood of jesus hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. Thank you for the blood. Hallelujah. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The precious blood of Jesus Christ. The precious blood of Jesus Christ. This is what it's all about today. It's about 
through his blood. Can you imagine just hanging on a cross? I want you to just walk with him for a couple of seconds. Hanging on the cross. I'm not saying standing by the cross, but hanging on the cross. Had done nothing. But they had to hang it out there on this old rugged cross, the son of God. My Lord. If he wanted to hunt and die for our sins, that was telling me that he was doing things for the future. Not only for that day, but for the future. Just hanging, they nailed a few things through his through his hands. Now, like I said, I want you to walk with me for a minute. When he nailed them in the right hand, the blood began to stream down. When they nailed them in the left hand, they was began to the blood began to stream down as well. And when they did him in his feet. The blood continued to run because it was not only was it coming from the hand, the feet, and where they pierced him in the side, it was also coming where they put the thrones in his head. My Lord, my Lord, can you suffer anymore? Mm. So tonight, or should I say this evening, I will be coming from St. Matthew's 27 and 46. And it reads, in about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, Lumba, Sabagna. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Jesus, at the ninth hour. And while you was walking with me, I was kind of thinking about just an hour on a hot Alabama day to be standing by the cross, sweating, S sweating, not bleeding, but sweating and tired and hungry. But the ninth hour, my Lord, Father, I thank you once again for this day. I thank you, Lord, for the, the Friday that we call Good Friday, before your resurrection. Lord, I praise you on today, giving you thanks for everything that you ever done and whatever you may decide to do. But now, God, as I step into this podium, Lord, I ask you to remove old Stockdale out the way on tonight. And Lord, you have your way. And I thank you for everything that you do in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you now, Lord. Amen, amen, amen. The question is from Jesus on the cross is found in Matthew 27 and 46 and in Mark 15 and 34. And it is a quotation from Psalms 22 and 1. It is asked by Jesus as he suffered on the cross. My Lord, what a day. And faces the sin of the world being poured out upon him. Not upon you or me, but upon him. You couldn't have took what he took on that cross. Matthew and Mark both recorded this cry of Jesus. That was the fourth of the seven last sin of Jesus. It occurred about the ninth hour after sunrise or about 3 p.m. You know, some folks said the hottest part of the day is at 12 o'clock. But the sun can be hot at one o'clock, two o'clock, or three o'clock, four, five, whatever God decide to make it hot. So I can imagine about 3 p.m. it was scorching in the desert. Mm. He had been fully committed to going through the crucifixion since Adam and Eve sinned. Don't do anything to bring it upon our kids. Since he knew they would fall and stay there on the cross. He could have called forth several 
legions of angels and delivered him to deliver him if he decided to abort the cross. But what did he mean by why have you forsaken me? You know, that's a term we all use. Forsaken. David, was one, David wrote, once wrote, I have not seen the righteous forsaken. Psalm 37 and 24. Forsake means to abandon or leave helpless. Being forsaken is a, is a horrific experience, but to be forsaken by God would be the worst. My Lord. Surely his father had not forsaken him. Later statement shows Jesus knew his father didn't, but didn't momentarily leave him helpless. Why? First, Jesus was talking on himself of all the sins of humanity. The Lord had laid on him the iniquity of us all. Isaiah 53 and 6. And, 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 and God would not intervene to ease anything associated with the penalty of sin. Mm. Don't do it. If he didn't do it for his son, don't do it. My Lord. Uh, sins causes suffering. Mm, think you got away with something, right? But now you're suffering. And Christ bore its full weight, including the emotional trauma of comprehending how sins distance us from God. He had previously declared that the Father has not left me alone. John 8 and 29, he had never experienced the loneliness that comes from being cut off from God. But now, bearing the sins of the world, he would. Can you just imagine being cut off from God? Just a question, but I want you to think about it. I want you to think about that. To me, it was like being cut off from your own father. I don't think none of us wanted to have that to happen. But we talk of the man with all power. Have you ever felt alone, forsaken? Christ knows the feeling. And he can give you the understanding and faith you need in such times. What does Jesus' fourth word from the cross teaches us about faith? about commitment, about love. What effects should this understanding have in our lives? Faith. It tells us that though he was in agony and he and the, the and and of uh, death, he still trusted his father and was crying out to him for help. Even as he fulfilled scriptures by speaking the word ascribed to him in Psalms 22, his father, his father back was turned from him. Even in the separation from his father, he knew was there. This was the first and only time Jesus called his father God. Must have been some stuff happening there for him to call his father God. He never called him that before. Until that point, he always called him father. He did this so he can call our God father now that we are engrafted into his family as believers. Amen? As believers. He had been fully committed, commitment. He had been fully committed to going, to going through the crucifixion since Adam and Eve sins. Since he knew they they would fall and, and, and stay there on the cross. He could have called forth legions of angels to deliver him. If he decided to abort the cross, love, his love is shown in every aspect of his life. It's all through the Bible. Talks about love because God is love. Amen. His life, his death, and his resurrection. It was all it, it was all lived and gone through because of his love for you and for me. Jesus endured an abandonment of separation from his father so that you and I would never experience being forsaken by him, even for a moment. Whenever I, I read or recall his words, I would never, never leave you nor forsake you 
not no not ever i think of what it cost my savior to be able to make that promise to us he must have loved us he must have loved the saints hallelujah what effect should this understanding have on our lives it should transform our understanding and how precious we are as individuals to him you need to have God for yourself not for somebody else to be praying for you you need to know the Lord for yourself it ain't no sense to me called it around town tell everybody needs you to pray for me I need to know God because I don't know what everybody may be praying for me you need to just know who he is for yourself amen 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 it should increase our devotion and obedience to him. Amen. You got to spend some time with him. He is love. His love should never ever be free. Cleanse bre breath that we breathe. Thank you, Jesus, for enduring the separation from our father. Taking it upon yourself. That feeling absolute loss. And that we may never be separated from you again. Our God is worthy to be praised. It may have happened 2,000 years or more ago, but today the blood still works. Hallelujah. 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 God bless you. I give honor to God on tonight because he's worthy to be praised. God bless you, and I love you much. Here you go. Here you go. Can you hear me? I can't hear myself. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. All right, it's on now. It's on now. It's on. Have your way up. Praise God. Worthy is the name. I have the fifth word. Okay. Let me just start by saying good evening. Good evening. Like like everyone else, giving salutations and first giving honor to God, who is the Lord yes. of my life. Yes. Amen. And to my father in the ministry. Pastor Dixon in his absence. Uh -huh. Mother Mary, also to Superintendent Glenn, to the, the ones who have come before me. I want to say praise God for you. This thing has to look at my face, otherwise it won't open. <laughs> all right, now. That's, that's better than, than having all these different yes. passwords. So if you don't know my face, don't you let them see me. Uh -huh. Amen, somebody. My word comes to us this evening by way of John, 19th chapter of John. Yes, looking at that verse 28 and 29. Yes, sir. Would you look at it with me? Mm -hmm. Amen. John. John. Yes, sir. I'm reading from the NIV, New International Version. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished, and so that scripture might be fulfilled, amen. Got a mind of his own. And so that scripture would be fulfilled. Jesus said, I am thirsty. Mm -hmm. well, a jar of wine vinegar was there. And so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of hyssop plant well, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. The word I thirst. Heaven and earth stood in anticipation mm -hmm. as events of Jesus' crucifixion took place. 
the spiritual battle was coming to a full head as the consequences of all the sins of mankind were laid on an innocent God, the King Man. For all of those who focused, who were there in place, witnessing this divinity, Jesus Christ, and rightly so, we cannot forget that Jesus here is also human. Christ's action on the cross was not a, a painless suffering as a God. He who was not because of who he was, sin, but because of his virgin birth, unfamiliar of any incap incapable feeling of mankind, his struggle was now here right in front of our faces as we read the word of God to see that he was in pain. What we see here is one innocent king hanging between heaven and earth, hanging between two guilty malefactors, hanging there for you <laughs> and for me. We're here, we're here, I said, we're here and we're present and we can see we can witness Jesus sustain every agonizing moment right. as the nails were driven through his flesh. So that scripture would be fulfilled. Jesus said, I thirst. In Psalms 42, verses 1 and 2, the psalmist writes a prophetic psalm. Mm -hmm. I wish you'd pray with me. This is a scene of a witness that was long before. Christ was nailed to the cross. He says, as the heart panted after the water brooks, so panted my soul after thee. Oh God, my soul thirsted for God. For the living God, when shall I come and appear before God? It's a question all of us should ask ourselves, even though we're witnessing here Good Friday. We call it Good Friday. It was a good Friday because he died. Uh, that is a spiritual death yeah, yeah, yeah. so that I wouldn't have to. Yeah. Are you looking at me? Uh, amen, somebody. Come on, say amen, somebody. Amen. The fact of the matter is, is that if he had not done it, uh -huh. we would have to die the spiritual oh, death. Right, right. But he died so neither one of us, not you nor me, would have to die. Jesus, mm -hmm. Jesus here, he's the idea of his thirst. Yes, sir. Jesus, Jesus here, yes, he's sir. the acknowledgement of humanity. Yes, sir. Jesus here, he, yes. he bore the weight of the physicality and the fleshly limitations so that we would understand the depths and the fullness of his spiritual well-being. Come on, somebody. Come on. And everlasting love. Mm -hmm. An everlasting glory for his creation and his willingness to endure. Mm -hmm. Come on, come on. So we won't have to die. He died. Mm -hmm. He thirsted while simultaneously he poured himself out as an offering. Scripture tells us that when the gods pierced him in the side, a mixture of blood and water sprang forth. And he thirsted on the behalf of you and I while simultaneously being the living water of life. He is who we all will drink from. The blood. Mm -hmm. The blood would be the blood of the new creation. The new covenant. Mm -hmm. His humanity. His divinity will be our salvation. Fully in the moment, and Jesus revealed the love of an approachable and reliable God. Can you hear what I'm saying? Are you looking at me? The humanity of Jesus Christ. So that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus says, 
our thirst. Yeah. Jesus Christ was fully human as well as fully divine. The two were inexcusable. They were linked, meaning that the two were not uh, persuaded to get along, but they were divinely inspired to be linked together for you and for myself. Mm -hmm. His divinity, his humanity were linked together in agreement for only the service so that all mankind, while he hung between heaven and earth, Jesus, the Lord of our lives, our divine king, was hanging on the cross so that he would answer the question that had been asked, who will go for us? Who will go and die for our people? Who will go and redeem them to us? Jesus he went. In Psalm 63, 1 and 2, it says, O God, thou art my God. Early I will seek thee. My soul thirsted for thee. My flesh lit, lit for thee in a dry. I look for you in a dry and thirsty land where no water is to see thy power and glory as I have seen it in the sanctuary. We see him in the sanctuary because the sanctuary is where God dwells. And you are his sanctuary. God dwells in you if you will allow him to. As Jesus cried out in, in thirst, it reminds us that he was still human. He bled. He hurt. And he endured the agony of being murdered. All for you and for me. The need to endure death that our God might endure for eternal life. We have it. We have it now in a spiritual scale. Jesus paid it all so that the scripture might be fulfilled. Jesus said, I thirst. When Israel was taken into exile in the prophetic lamentation, a word about spiritual barrenness. Mm -hmm. Over in Ezekiel 19 and 13, the word says, and now she planted in the wilderness in a dry and thirsty ground so that God, Jesus, would come and die for you and for me. Christ is hanging between heaven and earth. Oh, wooden cross. The God King, Jesus, made himself Lord so that we can be elevated to a right standing with our Heavenly Father. God is great, he's mighty, and he's awesome for you and for me. He is seated on, on the throne, and he rules as a sovereign king over all creation. There is nothing beyond his reach, nothing beyond his influence, nothing beyond, come on, say amen with me, nothing beyond uh, his ability to continue to reign and be victorious through all eternity. This is the same God who cried out, I thirst. Yes, this is the same God that he is willing to sacrifice himself. Yes, who is willing to become nothing for the sake of those he cares about. Yes, Come on, say amen. Yes, In order to save them from themselves, yes, Christ became nothing. Yes, Every second, the pain and the torture that Christ endured was all profound in an act of love. He was willing, dying in our place we will never need to endure the death that he died what christ has already endured for us we don't have to go and try it for ourselves whenever we have physical or spiritual lack of need all we have to do is be able to remember that we serve an approachable god we serve a god of grace we serve a god of mercy he said a God who died for us, who understood the necessity to the extent of the fullness of the exhaustion on our behalf. He came, ordered that we would be able to approach God. Jesus died for our approach. Jesus became the need, the needed glue that we had need of so that we would be able to hold on when things get rough. He's a glue. That makes certain that we can enter into a relationship with God. He's a glue that brings us closer to our heavenly father. He's a glue, Christ is. He's answering the call to go and die as a man. Mm -hmm. Jesus 
cemented our relationship with God and our standing with heaven. Mm -hmm. We got a God now that we don't have to worry about. Come on, I'm coming to my clothes. I know you're tired. I know you're getting weary. But you need to remember that the thirst that Jesus had was not an unusual thirst. It was a thirst that you and I always have whenever we find ourselves in a strait. Whenever we find ourselves not understanding what's going on in our life. We have a God who is fully able to understand and sympathize with our sin and temptation. First, he was tempted in the same way we are all tempted. Christ took on the flesh as one of us. He understood what we go through. He understood the temptations we're faced with. Will you say amen? amen? We know that he knows all about our problems. We know that he knows and he will come lickety split to make certain that you have whatever you have need of. He knows all about us. He bores the weight of the consequences of our sins in your sins and mine. Mm -hmm. He is the one. Oh, I wish I could tell it a little bit better than the way I tell it. But he went to the cross for you. And he's your fellows. He's your fellow servant as you are to God. He wants to have fellowship with you. He wants to have conversation with you. He wants God to have a relationship with you. He wants to make certain that the scripture might be fulfilled in him. And so he says, I thirst. There's a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunge of Beneath the flood, lose all their guilty stains. Lose all their guilty stains. Oh, yes, they do. Lose all their guilty stains. And sinners plunge beneath the flood and lose all their guilt and stains. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be truly blessed. Be truly blessed. Amen. Glory to God. Let's say amen. Hallelujah. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. Oh, yeah. Oh, when I think of the goodness of Jesus, and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, thank God for saving me. So good to be in there, I am. I'm coming from John, the 19th chapter, the 30th verse. And it says, after, he said at thirst. The soldiers thought he wanted to drink. Right, right, right. So they gave him some vinegar mm -hmm. to try to cool the pain down. They gave him some vinegar. Mm -hmm. They didn't understand what he was meant by. But he said, I thirst, hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Thirst to be back with his father, hallelujah. I don't want to preach at you. I want to talk to you to remind you who your father is, the Messiah, uh -huh. your Savior, your Lord. Your redeemer, redeemer, I just want to remind you who he is. Amen. After Jesus realized those things were, were accomplished, were completed, the task and commission that God gave him, he remembered what his father told him to do, what he should do when he comes to earth. He remembered to go and save the people. And his name shall be called Jesus. And he shall save his people from sin. Yeah. Not the flesh, but the spirit part. Uh, That's why the Bible said the flesh cannot understand the things of God. Only the spirit can. Mm -hmm. And that's why Jesus came to redeem us back. Amen. The commission, the task that God gave his only begotten son, which if you think about it, come think on. with me. Only the Messiah could do the things that Jesus did. Yeah. The task that he got that he had to do uh -huh. exceeded what man or prophet could do. Uh -huh. 
Only the anointed of God could do those things. The anointed prophet, the anointed uh, Messiah well, could heal the sick. Yes, he saved. I'm going to realize that God can save. Tell the truth. He saved you. He saved me. He saved. He came to save. He came to heal. He came to, to uh, recover. He came to make us whole again. The devil's job is to kill, steal, steal your joy. Your joy. Your joy. Talking about steal your righteousness. He's a thief. He's a liar. He is the father of lies. Hallelujah. He came to teach us to restore us back to God. How many know that we were all going our own way? Doing our own thing. I know I was. I don't know why I was doing my own thing when I was in the world. You couldn't tell me what I would do what would make me happy. You do your thing and let me do mine. Remember they had that song? Do your own thing. Everybody was doing their own thing, going their own way. But God rescued me. He rescued me. Hallelujah. I didn't think I was worthy. I I just said, not even come to church in, in, in revival. All I said, brothers and sisters, this, this is me. All I said was, God, if you are real, I want to know you before I die. That's all I said. Ms. Jim, that's all I said. God, if you are real, I want to know you before I die. They want to live on this earth and know there was a God who was so kind, so loving, and did not even get to know him. So God, I want to know you before I die. And he came into my life. You know, I like to do a song. He real, real. He loves real to me. Yes, he is. Oh, yeah. Yes. He gives me the victory. Go me to be But I can't live without him. That is why I love him so. He's so real to me. He is, he is still the anointed son of God. He is still the anointed prophet. He is still the Messiah. Hallelujah. He is the. See, see, think with me now. I want you to put thinking, thinking cap on. He is the appointed king. He is the appointed king. Hallelujah. He was God in the flesh. How many, how many of you know that? He was God in the flesh. The word of God that became flesh and did what? Dwell among us. So you get a chance to see him and know him. See what he's right. And yet, he's a holy God. Some people say, no, that, that, that's not fair. You ever heard that? That's not fair. No, God is not a fair God. He is a just God. He will give you just what you deserve. He's a just God. Hallelujah. Bless his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The fulfillment of this special task, listen, that he came to do, only the Messiah could do it. No prophet, no, no other body could do what he came to do. Give you life, rescue you, reconcile you back to God when you didn't deserve it. When you thought you wasn't worthy, he thought you was worthy. He anointed you. He appointed you. Hallelujah. In fact, your father said this. And the gates of hell shall not and cannot prevail against his word. He says, I've sent my word and it will accomplish that I sent it to do. And it will not come back to me void. Love won't come back to God and say, oh, I can love. Peace won't come back and say, God, I couldn't give him. No, my word will not return to me void, but it will accomplish that what I send it to you. Knowing that God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he need to repent. What is, I don't, and this blow my mind sometimes. How can everything that God say be right? Paul, oh, everything that he says is right. How can that happen? He just says it and it's happened. It's going to last. It's going to prevail. That's your father. I'm talking about your father. Hallelujah. I just want to remind you who he is. 
He said, it's finished. It is finished. Thinking in his mind, nothing else he need to do. No other God need to come. It is complete. It is completed. It is it's, it's done. That's another good word. That's the word I had on my paper. Finish. If you don't want to use finish, you done. When it's done, when Mama says it's done, it's done. Nothing else you nothing else can you do. It's done. It's done. No other God. Hallelujah. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. It is done. It is finished. I've already paid the price. Nobody else can come and pay the price. I've already done. Hello. God bless you today. Come on, put your hand together and give. Hey, tell the Lord, thank you. Hallelujah. When you think of the goodness of the Lord and all He's done for you, you can shout for joy and say, Thank you, Lord. If it had to be the Lord on our side. Where we will be today. Hallelujah. He's a good God. And he keep on doing great things. And when you need him. He right there. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. Hallelujah. I like the song when he said. Speak Lord. Speak to me. All I need. Is a word from you. Speak, Lord, speak to me. All I need is a word from you. Speak, Lord, speak to me. Hallelujah. How many need the Lord speak to you? I remember when the Lord, I was out, and the Lord spoke to me with that steel voice. He said, All the time. You come through there if I brought you through. So I want you to make a job for now. And I've been running ever since. And I'm not tired yet. It get a little hard sometimes. And the way it get a little rough. But I know a man that calls you. Right there when I need you there. I won't be with you long, but I'm Luke the 23rd and the 46th verse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, when the Lord and when Jesus had cried when he had cried oh, with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hand I commit my spirit. And had said this, he gave up the ghost. Oh, it was finished all the work that God had called him to do. Completed. There was nothing up done that wasn't, wasn't completed. Well, oh, that was something. He gave his life for the sins of the world. Through him, we can be saved. Hallelujah. Complete and accomplish. Uh -huh. Oh, he accomplished the work of the Lord. Yes, oh, he left that for us today. Complete yes. the work of God. What he have you to do. And yes. John 17, 14, he said, I have glorified thee uh -huh. on the earth. He glorified his father because he was working for him and win his soul for the father which in heaven. He said, I have finished the work 
which thou have given me to do, meaning there was nothing undone that he didn't do. He did the work. For, for us to do, we must work whereas day come night come, no man can work. It getting a little late in the evening and the sun is going down. It's time for us to wake up and be by our father bid. Sometimes we might say we'll do it tomorrow, but tomorrow might be too late. In the time that Jesus was on the earth for three and a half years, he worked it for the Lord. They called him everything but a child of God. But he didn't stop. He kept on doing the work of the Lord. And that's for us. And we got to keep on doing. He said, we got to keep on doing the work of the Lord. Jesus, is a, he, he, he died, but he got up. On the third day, he risen from the dead. <laughs> well, we can jump for joy and say, if it hadn't been the Lord that gave his life, where would we all be today? Oh, we can be saved through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Oh, there so many they looked at him. <laughs> they called him everything but a child of God. But he said, Father, forgive them <laughs> when he was on the cross. Because <laughs> they know not what they were doing. If they had to know what they were doing, they would have never crucified him they spit on him <laughs> they nailed him to the cross <laughs> but he didn't give up <laughs> he kept on keeping on <laughs> and we got to keep on keeping on <laughs> we got to keep on walking for the Lord <laughs> and doing what the Lord have you to do what he have you to do, that's what you do. You can't be me, and I can't be you. You have to be what the Lord have you to do. Oh, he sat at the right hand of the Father, making intercedes for praying for right now all that he went through for you and he did it for me we can jump with joy and say thank you Lord you didn't have to do it but you did it you were working for the father and for each and every one oh Lord and he said he died for all, not for the up and not for the downs alone, but he died on Calvary for us all the people, so we can have a chance to make it in. Just hold on, my brother. And my sister, they get a little hard sometimes. Sometimes somebody want to put you on the other side. Oh, just call on the Lord. He right there. He said, I'll never leave you. And I know check you what I done for the I do it for you how many know the Lord will do it for you early in the morning or late at night won't you call 
call on the Lord. He read there. He said, what I've done for others, I do it for you. How many here believe it? When you pray, God will answer your prayer. And he will do it for you. Come on, give the Lord some praise. Come on, jump for joy. Say, Lord, thank you for all. When you got the work, you got everything that you need. It's more pressure in silver and gold. Well, I'd rather have the way. Cause it will help me. It will see me through. It will my in my need when I need it. I can jump for joy. I can say thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh that those who live should not live long for themselves, but for he who died for thee on Cassian, and he risen again from the dead. We got to live for the Lord. We got to put it in his hand. We got to call on the Lord. Whoa, I don't know what it is. Say, Jesus, I want you to help me. I want you to do it for me. Do it. Oh, bring him up. Hallelujah. He can take the lead and bring him up to the top. He can do it because he's God all by himself. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. Oh, thank you. And jump for joy. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God for the word of God that's gone forth on tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God for the word that's gone forth on tonight. Praise the Lord. We thank God for every presenter. This was a powerful, powerful night. Amen. Praise God. We thank God for each and every one of you took time out to pray and study and prepare to bring our mighty word of God. Amen. Praise God. At this time, we're going to call for our superintendent. And before we do that, I do want to acknowledge our guests of South Bay District tonight that we have with us. Mother Cynthia is here with us. Praise God. Sister Reese, praise God. Amen. Mother Dionys Jackson, praise God. We thank God for your coming out. We sure do appreciate it. Praise God.